Yo, yo. Yo, yo. Yo, yo. Ah, Mookie. Yo. How you feel, shorty? Feel all right. Everything good with you? Everything good. And we back with another reaction video. Now, Mookie, yo. Mm -hmm. Got something new for you today. Okay. I told you that we was reacting to all the videos, bro. We getting it in. Okay. We got evidence that Bruce Lee was a superhuman. Superhuman. A superhuman. Now, tell me, what do you know about Bruce Lee, bro? Um, I know he's one of the top martial artists alive. Um, mm -hmm. You know, my favorite martial artist is Tony Jai because they built similar. Mm -hmm. You know, they like the same size and everything like that. Tony Jai? Is Tony that... Jai, yeah. Who is that? You don't know who Tony Jai is. I know who Mike... Ain't Michael Jai the black dude? No, that, that's, that's... Who I'm thinking about, yo? No, you thinking about... Um... <laughs> he played it, uh, Why Did We Get Married? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know who you're talking about, but no, that ain't. Tony Jai is, is, is another top-level martial artist, you know? Okay. I mean? Played in a movie called The Protector. Oh my dope. God, definitely got... Uh, yeah, he's dope. <laughs> locked in with that, but... um. Yeah, I'm um I'm kind of, I, I watch a little bit of martial arts. Right. You, I think you always been big in martial arts. You and my father yeah, for real. Yeah. You're our father. Mm -hmm. Real big in martial arts. So look, man, if y'all new to the channel, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, man. This is evidence that Bruce Lee was superhuman. Let's check it out and see. Let's go. I might, it, it might sound too philosophical, but it's unacting, acting, or acting, unacting. If you... You've lost me. <laughs> <laughs> I have. Uh... Bruce Lee was a legend in every sense of the word. This martial artist touched the hearts and minds of many around the world, either through his outlandish fight scenes or the serenity of his philosophical musings. By the time that Bruce died in 1973, he had already built a time-defying legacy despite being just 32 years old. Mm. Many of us weren't even alive back then, but we sure do remember the famous martial artist and movie star. Although Bruce had many talents and skills, his martial art cops were definitely his top selling point. This man was so awesome, in fact, that many believe that he could have been superhuman. And in this video, we'll explore some evidence that lends credibility to those <laughs> claims. Join us as we have a look at 10 pieces of evidence that proved that Bruce Lee was superhuman. Wow. Number 10, the dragon flag. Bruce Lee's ascent to the top of the martial arts field was definitely not by accident. <laughs> oh, oh he... I even peeped that. <laughs> My man straight blocked the punch, mm -hmm. hit him with 12 combos, right. and then yelled at him. <laughs> <laughs> Young age that he was destined Will to be Smith, a great son, fighter, up, baby? and he quite literally spent every waking moment of his life honing his skills so that he could be the best that he could be. Now, if you have any experience with fighting, you know that you have to be in peak physical condition. Hmm. Otherwise, there's a good chance that you'll be getting knocked on your keister when you take the stage. Bruce, however, was so dedicated to his fighting art that it pretty much bordered on obsessive. According to Bruce's wife, he would spend pretty much every mm. waking moment and free time that he had training. Mm. That's how disciplined and focused that he was. Bruce was especially focused on his core, the part of the body that includes hey, the torso and Ooh, stomach. Yo. He believed that this part of the body was involved in basically every form of movement and fighting technique, so he spent even more time developing that. But being the man who was destined for such great things, Bruce was not about to do the regular training drills. <laughs> yo, can Instead, you do that, yo? No. <laughs> what is that? Like, what is that move, bro? I don't know, bro. <laughs> Show the blades up. <laughs> Show the blades up. <laughs> he invented his own workout regimen called Dragon Flag. In Dragon Flag, Bruce would lay flat on a bench and then would lift up his entire body from the bench what is he with holding nothing on? but his shoulders like, is he... touching the surface. Be holding on from something. there, he yeah, held that position for minutes, raising and lowering his entire body at will, which is probably they something I'm going to skip the move. next time they probably I do. at the gym. Mm. Today, Dragon Flag is a staple of many martial arts training programs and exercise sessions, although I don't really think oh, that yeah, there's yeah, anyone who could do it, it as mm. impressively as Bruce Lee. Number nine. Bruce caught rice grains with chopsticks. <laughs> While physical fitness that, yeah. is undoubtedly a great way that. for any fighter to train, it's also important that they work on several of their instincts. And amongst those instincts, hardly does any matter more than the reflexes. The ability to think fast and react to changes around you is going to help anyone 
especially a fighter who's in a bit of a tight spot while in combat. Mm. Bruce knew this well, and being the obsessed and focused fighter he was, he worked tirelessly to hone his reflexes mm. so that they could help him while fighting. But while most people would use regular methods to train their reflexes, I think that we all know that Bruce was not one for the regular stuff. Right. According to legend, he would actually throw grains of rice into the air and then literally catch them in midair <laughs> with nothing but chopsticks. No, yo. Now, if you've seen the 1984 classic Karate Kid, you'll probably yeah, remember yes, the point where Mr. Miyagi trains Daniel to catch a fly with a pair of chopsticks, and I'm pretty sure the movie got its inspiration from the legendary Bruce Lee himself. It was reported that Bruce was a master of this drill and would catch the rice almost every time that he threw it into the air. Who do you think Bruce Lee trainer was? Uh, people say Bruce Lee trainer was Ip Man. I.P. Ip Man. I, I, know, I know who that they is. They say that was his trainer. And yo was a beast, wasn't he? Yeah, he, he didn't start training Bruce Lee until he was 16. It was said that Bruce Lee came in there when he was like 12, right. 13, talking about, yeah, I need to be trained, blah, blah, blah. He said, when you get older, come back. You know what I'm saying? Well, I was about to say, so do you think he better than Ip Man? Ip Man was a beast. For real? No. I think Ip Man might get Bruce Lee. <laughs> Honestly. But there's no video evidence of that. But considering how dedicated he was, I wouldn't doubt that it actually happened one little bit. Number eight, Bruce was unusually strong. Whenever you think of the word superhuman, it's easy to see why one of the first things that comes to your mind is strength. After all, superheroes can pull off amazing feats of strength like they're nothing at all. But if Bruce should be described as being superhuman, it's kind of logical that he'd be much stronger than any average person. <clears throat> and in many ways, he was. And merely looking at Bruce, you may easily doubt the fact that he could have superhuman strength. <clears throat> After all, he wasn't necessarily the most muscular or even toned person out there. And with his relatively small stature, it's <clears throat> pretty tempting to overlook his strength. Right. But you'd be wrong. By simply looking at some of his training videos, you could get the sense that Bruce was incredibly strong. Just take a look at him working with punching bags. Kill Most people who bag. use large punching bags to practice their kicks and punches would do so in a slow and controlled manner, even those with abs and 200 packs. <laughs> Bruce, on the other hand, pretty much tore through these bags like they were Swiss cheese. <laughs> Bruce reportedly even had challenges using regular punching bags because he'd simply punch through them and tear them down. So, per usual, he needed to get a new challenge. Now, keep in mind that regular punching bags weigh about 50 kilograms, but the bags that Bruce would use weighed north of 135 kilograms, which is almost three times the weight yeah, of a regular crazy, punching though. bag, and I'm pretty sure that Bruce grew to rip through those bad boys and tear them to shreds as well. Mm. So, it is safe to say... So, it really just looked like everything regular people did, mm -hmm. he took it up two or three more notches. Yeah, definitely. He like, yo, I'm going to be the best at whatever I do regardless. And I'm going to over-assessive to see, bro. Yes. You feel me? Like, superhuman, like, I can see why main man is saying this because he trained his body to be yeah. there. You feel me? And it's overly excessively succeed. And it's probably, oh, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> my bad, but, and it's probably, it had to... It had to drain his body, yo. It do. It probably would drain his body the first couple of times he did it. Mm -hmm. Now, in the first couple, like a right. lot. You feel me? Like that Kill Bill scene. Mm -hmm. Like, remember when she was in there? Yeah. <laughs> Making her hands bleed and all that. She couldn't even eat. <laughs> she could. Hey, this isn't a man that you'd like to get a punch or kick from on your lovely body. Right. Number seven, an irregular approach to exercising. Everyone exercises, some of us do more so than others, but that's a discussion for a different day. Mm -hmm. Amongst the many exercise routines that are available, push-ups and pull-ups are one of the most popular. Today, you don't even have to be a fighter to learn how to do a push-up or pull-up. Mm. After all, both exercises offer the best of both worlds. You don't need any special gear for them, and they're difficult enough to help you work up a sweat and supercharge your body. Hmm. Thanks to their complexity, we all have a threshold of push-ups and pull-ups that we can all perform. Some of us can go up to 50 push-ups at a go, while few of us can only manage about 10. That's yes, you. Yes, I know myself. <laughs> That's you. There's no shame in it. Here's the thing, though. Bruce was on an entirely different level. 
If you have a specific number of push-ups that you're comfortable doing, I guarantee you that Bruce Lee could do double without even breaking a sweat. Uh. And if you're still doubting, well, consider this. At some point, Bruce was actually tested to see how many push-ups that he could do. And in true Bruce Lee fashion, he decided to raise the bar by completing uh. the test with one hand while using only two fingers, his thumb and index finger. And even at that, he was able to nail up to 200. That other hand got to be like, was God in him. Like, I don't know. You see the other hand on his leg? Yeah. So what do you think about that? Like That hand can't be like protect me. I just think he got total body control. Like over, like just one. Mm -hmm. So his arm is that strong. It got to be, bro. You think he can do it with both hands? Like if he was to switch that right, that right hand to his left hand? Absolutely. Yo, this is crazy. <laughs> oh, that's really wild. Absolutely. 200 push-ups? 200 push-ups. I can't do 200 straight. We know that. I probably can do... Two. 199. <laughs> this guy's bluffing. Don't believe him. 100 push-ups. Bruce was able to take things up yet another notch when he offered to complete a different challenge by doing push-ups with only two thumbs. That's his, and in that's this crazy, position, bro. he still managed to do over 100 of them. And now for the grand finale. If you were to grade Bruce based on the regular two-handed push-ups that we all struggle to accomplish, the regular two. he was reportedly able to do over 1,500 of them in a row mm. without stopping. Mm. The man Hold on, yo. He got to be hitting burpees or something. Nah. Just straight up. He straight ain't hitting up. a... Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, straight up. 1,500? 1,500. Some guys is that strong, bro. For real? Yeah. That's, yeah. Oh, that's, that's like rock solid, yo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so would you ever want to get the 1,500 push-ups? You got to be like... Of course. You going to be cut like a bag of dope or something, yo. <laughs> <laughs> yo, that's crazy. On the boards, and somehow you definitely... Like, yo, you going to be like... <laughs> I seen that video. That he ain't do 1,500. Number six, he did 72. <laughs> Bruce was too fast to be filmed. Bruce Lee began his early life as a martial artist, and like many of the time... He had spent a great deal of his life honing his skills. Mm. So by the time that Hollywood came calling, he had essentially already become one of the most renowned martial artists in the world. But here's the thing, though. Bruce almost didn't even make it into the movie business. At the time, movie-making technology was just getting to the peak of its prowess, and there was still a lot of work that needed to be done. Bruce was so fast that directors literally had issues filming him. In 1966, mm. Bruce got one of his biggest breaks on screen with uh -huh. The Green Hornet, a superhero television series that lasted just one season. Do you, do you think he always wanted to be an actor? Uh, No, I don't think that. I just think he wanted to be the best martial artist he can be, and acting just came his way. So did he ask you, like, fight in, like, tournaments and stuff? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he did, yeah. <laughs> My man probably, probably wasn't caught on camera, but yeah. Right, okay. But Bruce was undoubtedly the breakout star. However, shooting the series was very challenging because the cameras of the time just couldn't capture his moves in real time. <laughs> Unlike today, when we have cameras that can shoot up to 240 frames per second, right. most movie cameras in the 60s and 70s struggled even to shoot at 24 frames per second. Mm. This would mean that many of Bruce's fight scenes just couldn't show up correctly on camera. Mm. Bruce could throw up to nine punches and six kicks respectively in a single second, and that's surely nothing that could record that much. Mm. Producers of the Green Hornet would claim that many of the recordings that they had showed Bruce seemingly standing motionless while all of his enemies fell to the ground. <laughs> but in reality, the man was just too fast to be captured. Eventually, filmmakers Bro, had to ask him to take movie, things yeah. down a couple of notches. You're too fast. We can't record so you. Could follow <laughs> yeah. his actions. Number five, the one-inch punch. Mm. The field of martial arts is full of a lot of flashy feats. You can see artists breaking concrete slabs like they were made of plastic or jumping high in the air like they had suspenders attached to their <laughs> waists. Man. However, I would argue that no martial arts feat is as famous as Bruce Lee's one-inch punch. As the name would suggest, the one-inch punch would have Bruce punch a target from just an inch away and pretty much send them flying. The punch has become something of a pop culture legend, even being featured in the classic cult film Kill Bill. 
Despite standing just an inch away from his target, Bruce's punch could send them flying as far back as five meters. <laughs> Still, the punch was strong enough to essentially incapacitate the victim once it had landed. According to one researcher at Stanford University, Bruce's fists travel a small distance in mere milliseconds mm. in order to deliver the one-inch punch. However, the jab actually draws power from Bruce's legs. To land the punch, Bruce straightens his legs with a quick and explosive mm. knee extension, and this sudden jerk of his legs increases the speed of his hips, which in turn moves his shoulder forward and allows him to thrust his arm. <laughs> Bruce's elbow is then extended very quickly as well, driving his fist forward. And finally, he flicks his wrist just before impact, further increasing the velocity of the punch. Mm. By the time that Bruce lands his one-inch punch, he's combined the strength of some of the biggest muscles of his body. It's been estimated that the force of the punch is almost equivalent to that of a car crash at about 50 kilometers per oh, hour. Oh, that's crazy. And so, it's no wonder that the punch sends his opponents flying in an instant <laughs> like... and incapacitates them for minutes. Number four. Bruce's kicks sent people literally flying. Mm. As the determined martial artist that he was, Bruce was also adept at using pretty much anything that he had when the time came to throw down. And although most of the devastation that he would cause was with his hands, Bruce was not exactly a lightweight when it came to using his feet either. Mm. According to many sources, one of Bruce's most treasured possessions was his training shield. He would use it to practice his kicks and pretty much took the shield everywhere he went. Right. As the reports would have it, Bruce would invite people to wear the training shield, and then he would kick them. The amount of power that he put into the shields <laughs> varied, but it was noted that Bruce could easily mm. kick people so hard that they went straight up flying into the air. That's crazy, bro. He, uh, if he was to ask you, young man, man, hold this shield real quick and see if you go back. Would you hold it? I say what you want. Uh, no, uh, I, no, I, I'm saying he said like you know I just want to practice my kick, right? And you know it's Bruce Lee. Would you hold it? Yeah, <laughs> I do it just, to, <laughs> just look, to get the experience, <laughs> just to look, have that experience. You don't look so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, the lightning fast magic trick. Everyone loves a little bit of magic. It stretches the mind and makes us all want to believe in the truly unbelievable. Never one to shy away from an opportunity to amaze, Bruce also dabbled in some magic back in the day. Only that this trick would once again prove just how superhuman that he was. We all know the classic trick where a magician pulls a coin from the back of your hair, mm -hmm. but Bruce would take that trick and tweak it just a little bit. In his own version, he'd place a coin in the palm of your hand and then <laughs> ask you to stretch your hand out with the coin in it. The moment that you notice any slight movement in Bruce's body, your task would be to close your hand quickly so that he didn't take the coin. Right. It might seem simple, but here's the thing. Bruce was so quick that no one was able to stop him from taking the coin from their hand. It's just another testament to how quick the man was. <laughs> For an added layer of difficulty, he then decided to switch things up, and instead of only trying to take the coin, he would replace the coin that he took with a completely different one, mm. all before you'd even be able to close your hand. Just imagine if Bruce Lee had chosen to be a pickpocket instead of a martial artist. <laughs> he probably would have made a killing. Number two, he was unpunchable. Mm. Bruce Lee's chops as a martial artist became obvious pretty quickly, but for some reason, quite a lot of people still needed to be convinced. Even though he had become a world-renowned name by the 1960s, mm -hmm. Bruce would always be challenged to street fights. Hmm. Many people in that... They usually just walk up to him? Yeah. Why? I know who you are. Why you think they wanted to the street? Meet me in the streets. <laughs> That's some hood stuff, man. Yeah, yeah. But so they felt like probably like he was the best for real, right, right, right. and they just wanted to challenge him. Uh, like they didn't really be out there. Yeah, that happened to people like us, bro. A dude just don't know there's something about you. That, you might be shining. You feel what I'm right. saying? You might get a lot of females. Now he want to fight. <laughs> Time just needed some convincing. Or perhaps they just love being hit. Right. Who really knows? While Bruce mostly shrugged off the challenges, there were certain times when he had to actually show exactly how good that he was. And wow, were people convinced. While on the set of Enter the Dragon, Bruce was challenged to a fight, and he obliged. And when he went on to take his man, opponent man, apart, like I told dodging you, yo, main man, Poplar, yo. Uh, Who is that big dude, man? That's Bolo. Like, why? He a beast, too? Yeah, he's he okay. 
He 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 just known for being a, a muscular Asian dude, but he definitely played in a, a lot. A big bully. Exactly. Every single blow that was thrown at him, he eventually locked his opponent in a submission against a wall. Then, when he was finished, the always magnanimous Bruce Lee still gave a lesson in combat. <laughs> Kicking someone's butt and teaching them how you did it? Well, that's a swell guy indeed. Oh, everything. Number one, he dislocated someone's shoulder with a slap. So at this point, we've pretty much covered Bruce's insane mm -hmm. feats of strength and the fact that his slender frame did not do him any justice. Right. But just in case you still doubt how strong that he was, maybe this will do it for you. Despite the fact that he was obviously that stronger move. than everyone else and needed to get special equipment just to train, <laughs> there were still times when Bruce had to spar with actual people. I'm not sure why anyone in their right mind would see Bruce Lee and say, hey, that's the guy I want to spar with, mm -hmm. but I guess that some people really believed in themselves in the 1960s. Anyways, it's been reported that Bruce Lee once dislocated someone's arm in training now keep in mind that the victim couldn't just have been anybody. He must have been a highly trained martial artist himself mm -hmm. who probably thought that he had the stones to go one-on-one -on -one with the great one. Mm. But still though, Bruce Lee dislocated his entire shoulder. Oh my gosh. As the reports would go, Bruce was quite confused when he was confronted after the altercation. According to him, he didn't even... So he didn't know that he dislocated this man's shoulder? Probably not, bro. That's how it is sometimes. What, you beating somebody up? And you don't know how bad you beat him up. <laughs> you just in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm just in there performing. <laughs> Hit the guy very hard. And what many thought to be a punch was, in fact, more of a light slap. Once again, I don't know how hard it is to learn, <laughs> but don't go within hitting distance of Bruce Lee. Considering the many feats that he managed to pull off in his lifetime, it's easy to see why many would remember Bruce Lee as the greatest martial artist who ever lived. Right. But perhaps the reason why he became so good at combat was the fact that he was just not a normal human being. I'm really not sure why many people decided to still get within striking distance of him, but at least they were the living proof that we all need that he was a demigod that walked among us. Mm. Which of these feats shocked you the most? Tell me all about it in the comments section down below. Mm. That video is crazy. Yeah. No, the one at the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> but we back to Bruce Lee. <laughs> no. We ain't watching it. <laughs> Bruce Lee, <laughs> superhuman. What you think? Yeah, I think I, as far as superhuman, that's a bit excessive. I don't think anybody's superhuman. When I think of superhuman, I think about superheroes and stuff like that. The I mean, Superman and all those type of people. If you had to choose a superhuman, y'all be that. Huh? Y'all be that. Yeah, I mean, him and do, me. He could do things like a lot of people couldn't do. Definitely. His training was like ridiculous, outrageous. Uh, like he trained way harder than anybody. But Bruce Lee, Floyd Mayweather, or Mike Tyson. Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee gonna give you everything he got. You think Floyd Mayweather gave you got some of his skills from him? Uh, no. What about Mike Tyson? Definitely not. <laughs> Oh man, overall, what you think about the video, bro? Cool vid, man. I enjoyed it. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. I love martial arts, so yeah. <laughs> if y'all new to the channel, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, man. Send us more videos, man. If y'all like this one, please let us know in the comment section. Y'all want more of this? Please let us know. We love y'all and we appreciate y'all. I'm Nick Dunst and I'm Mookie Dunst and we out, baby. One.